This is a Stipple Wild video. Uh, if you don't have Stipple Wild, then uh, this will make no sense at all. Uh, let me know if you want it. Just shoot me an email and maybe I'll let you have it. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to launch the program and then I'm going to go to new drawing. And we'll just hit start drawing. All right. So you'll notice that there's a new button down at the bottom. It looks like uh, like a waffle. Um, and then there are about 20 uh, number inputs. So we're going to go through these things uh, kind of piece by piece. Um, let's just go ahead. So this menu is called the grid menu. It it, it's describing, like the inputs in here are describing what the grid looks like inside of Stipple. Now generally when you use Stipple, there's no grid. It's just random. Uh, but I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and shut off auto uh, levels. So if you were to hit fill right now, you'd notice that there is a basic halftone grid kind of. Um, if we go and switch from our style over here on the left, if we switch this to hex and then give it a shot, I'm going to hit re. So now you have fill and you have refill. Re will undo the last fill. If, if the last thing in the undo memory is a fill, re will, will undo it. If it's not a fill, like say you hit the fill button and then you drew a little bit with your finger, uh, refill will just work like fill does. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna hit refill. And then you see that these are, uh, the dots are laid out in a hexagonal grid as opposed to a square grid. And one more step would be random. Now random, uh, basically randomly places the dots. Um, I'm going to go back to square and we will sh check out another thing. Now up here, there's a bunch of random stats. <clears throat> this is basically for me for testing purposes. Uh, it basically tells you the dot count and the, some other stuff right over here. Uh, that shouldn't really mean too much to you, but I also have the re and the fill button up there in case you don't have the grid menu open. It might be a quicker way to get to it. If you're just experimenting with colors or something and don't have the grid menu open and you don't need it. Well, those buttons are up there too, but also the screen lock button. And when screen lock is on, I can no longer draw on the screen. So if you're doing a lot of fill stuff and you're not going to be drawing at all with your finger, then I suggest just to put screen lock on, take it from there. Uh, okay. So we just talked about the styles. Now I'm going to go over to column distribution and row distribution. So by default, we have columns, and we have, uh, I'm going to hit delete. We have columns as the column distribution, which means that this number right here is, uh, it's going to do 90 columns. And what uh, match X means on row distribution is it means that use the same distance that was calculated in between dots for the row distribution. So it basically says like, if you're doing 90 dots, or if you're doing columns, which are 90 dots worth of columns or 90 columns, then whatever distance is in between those columns will be repeated for the, uh, the row. So just to show you, so, so that also means that this 180 is actually doing nothing at all right now. So I'll show you what I mean by this. If I switch the columns, let's say to 150 instead of 90 and hit fill, I hit refill, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, you'll see that the dots are dense, densely packed. Now, it doesn't matter what number I put in here. I'll put in uh, 25, 250,000. And then I'll hit re again. You'll notice that it's the same exact results. Nothing's happening because match X means that we're only using the column settings. But let's switch this to rows and let's switch the rows to 10. And then you'll see a, quite, a, quite a bit of a difference. So now we have... Uh, 150 columns, meaning like 150, maybe you can see how the, the cursor is going on the screen. 150 columns and only 10 rows. Now you'll say, wait, but I, uh, I only see seven rows. Well, it's still kind of going by whatever, however big your, uh, your draw image is. So if your draw image doesn't fill up the whole screen, then neither will your, uh, your dot pattern.
so moving forward let's see so now if i switch this to like 150 and then hit go you'll notice that it gets a little bit more compact but since your it's likely that your device is horizontal and vertical uh ratio is not you know is not one to one unless you're using a square device which i mean it's android so they're there probably are square devices but uh but it's likely that whatever you're using is basically a one to two ratio the the width of the screen is half as long as the height of the screen whatever uh let's play with a different setting uh i like to use pixgap now pixgap is actually describing the gap in between the dots so if we switch these both to pixgap and say we put on something like 10 so now there's going to be 10 pixels in between the midpoint of each dot that is placed. You'll see now we have this nice grid on it. But then if we go to say five, the dots are going to be tighter. And then say if we went to two, and you'll notice that when you start using, there, there are some settings that are going to cause some lag on your end. Now I'm going to make these dots smaller so we can see what we're doing. and. So now you'll see that the dots are actually so small that this whole thing looks looks like it's grayscale. Kind of an interesting effect, but it also uh, it took about four seconds. You can see how long it takes if you open up the, the fill menu up at the top, and you'll see that uh, it took 4,100 milliseconds, which is about four seconds. Um, the other setting that you have is coverage, and coverage is kind of neat too. So say I put in I wanted like uh 90 percent coverage for both my uh my rows and columns now if i go and hit i'm gonna make the dots a little bit bigger because coverage works good when you're playing with different dot sizes so now you'll see that these dots they're they're about they cover up about 90 percent of the screen now this is a little bit hard to explain it's basically calculating that value on the average dot size so it's like taking the midpoint between your high and your low and it's basically uh distributing the dots so 90 percent of the screen gets filled it's not precise math at all um however so so you'll notice that that we have this pattern where the dots are basically touching each other now if i go in and crank the dot size up because i have coverage on you'll notice that it well, I guess that wasn't a great example. Let's see, let me make that a little bit smaller. Um, you'll notice that we have a similar dot touching situation. Like the dots are touching each other on the, the edges, similar to how it was when we were down like this. It almost like, it's almost like it, it expands. Uh, it's an interesting one to work with. I generally stick to pix gap and column though. Uh, all right. So let's talk about a cool trick you can do. Now, if you have PixGap, let's put the row distribution for PixGap or row distribution with PixGap on at one pixel. And then we'll do uh, we'll do about 50 PixGap in between our columns. Now watch this. We'll get these cool line effects. Uh, let's do a little bit more than that. Let's do 100. So now we have, whoops. I mean the opposite. With PixGap, the higher the value, the more space in between the dots, the lower the value, the tighter the dots. And with uh, using columns in rows, that settings, the the more, the higher the value, the less distance between there is. But as it is, you can get any of these uh, with it within re pretty much. You can get any setting with different column distributions. It's just how you're describing it to Stipple so it knows what you're doing. Whatever is easiest for that particular situation. Now I'm gonna pick a different dot color so we can see what I'm talking about. Uh, now if I do a column offset and say I do 10, column offset is always measured in pixels and I hit fill, you'll see that now I have a, a, a set of columns that has been offset by 10 pixels. So now I'll pick a different color and we'll put in 20. And now I have three different colors 
So this can be cool. You can do some really cool stuff with with this. Um, and the same works for for row distribution. It just works in a different way. And every once in a while, you're not going to be able to. The settings you put in aren't actually going to turn into anything on the screen, and you're going to be like, "What the hell's going on?" There's a reason for everything. It's not magic. All right. So next, I'm going to talk about the waves. I think I've described everything I need to. Uh, all right. For the, I think I've described everything for the the grid itself uh in the whole time like you can mess with different uh like different like you can use the hex and you can use the random and you can see what it does there's a million combinations a billion combinations so we don't have time for all of it uh all right so next we're gonna play with uh we're gonna play with waves so now this first row of waves is describing my my x waves so X waves are waves that go, I don't know if you can see this on the screen, my, my cursor, but it's waves that go, that oscillate horizontally as opposed to vertically. So watch this. If I go and turn my waves on and I'm going to put it on numbers up and we'll just stick with 10. And we'll keep the amplitude at 20. We'll keep all the settings as they are. Just put number of on. And then this input is describing how many waves we want. Uh, so let me hit fill and... Now we have waves. Um, now if I increase the amplitude, let's put 50 in, you'll see now I have wavier waves. Uh, let's go back to 20. Um, and we can, we can play with some of these other things. All right, so one over F is confusing. We'll just call it legacy as software companies do when they leave a feature in for their, the users that already got used to their uh, program, but then they go and change it. So one over F is very hard to explain. Uh, it does some cool stuff. Um, again, same with same with the grid settings. Any like any setting you come up with under one F can be replicated in number of or in PX. Like it's all it's all describing the same thing, just with different words. Um, now the way that one F works is if I put, say I put in a big value like five hundred, the way it's less wavy maybe like you can only see like a slight bowing uh but say i put in like 100 and you'll see that we have more waves and say i put in something like two and you'll see that i have just like a ton of waves like so many waves that you can no longer really depict what exactly is going on anymore um and then pix gap works similar to pix gap up here whereas i'm describing the actual wavelength in in pixels so say i put in 50 you'll see that I'll end up with a wave every 50 pixels. Now we don't have a way to measure pixels on this screen. I mean, we could if we wanted to, to make a measurement grid, but uh, we're not gonna do that. So, so now with this number, if I put in 100, you'll see that there's a wave every 100. Uh, let's put in 200. You'll see that there's a wave every 200 pixels. All right, so we already touched upon amplitude a little bit. We put in a higher amplitude. I'm going to go back to number of. Number of is, is in my mind, the easiest one to work with because you can say, well, I want five waves per length of the screen. Um, let me go ahead and shut off the draw image so we can actually see the full waves. Make these things even. Now watch this. Number of, uh, let's put number of on 10. And you'll notice that there are 10, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, I guess there's 10 in there. Trust me. Uh, there better be, if you count there's not 10 after you use 10, you gotta let me know. Um, so yeah, so amplitude, say we push amplitude up to 50, hit go, we get wavy lines. So we push it up to 200, hit go. We get super wavy lines. Let's put it at like 20 as it is by default and move on to the next part. Okay, clipping. Clipping is kind of cool. I'm going to I'm going to use a different color and I'm going to just toss these waves on top of the other waves so we can see what's going on. So I'm going to put the clipping at uh -50 and I'm going to put the the clip high at 50. So now what it's doing is it's not letting the waves get past 50% height and it, it's not letting the waves get pat below 50% depth 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 uh so watch this if i hit fill you'll see what i'm talking about now all of a sudden 
Oh, well, this is confusing. Um, I'm going to delete. So now all of a sudden we, we've got these jagged lines because they got clipped off. Uh, so say we put in um, 80, but we'll keep the negative 50. And you'll notice that on one side, it goes out further than it does on the, on the, like the right side of the wave. It goes out further than the left side. Say we put this at zero and hit go. And we'll see that we have straight up flat spots on the wave. Uh, we'll put this at 100, show you what's going on. Now we have these like hernia shaped waves. Um, so now if you put in zero and zero, nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna make a wave. Um, if we put in 10 and 100, so now we're not dealing with a negative value. Generally speaking, clip low, you're going to make it a negative value. Usually you can't go lower than negative 100. You can't go higher than positive 100 on these ones. It just, uh, it won't let you even put it in. And if it does let you put it in, you got to let me know that too. Um, and you'll notice that again, we have these like herniated waves because it's like this section of the wave is just being clipped out completely. Um, I'm going to put this back at negative and positive, negative 100 and positive 100. We'll move on to percent. Um, we're going to leave it at zero for, the, for a second and put the waves out. And then I will pick a different color. Let's something less confusing. Pink, probably not. Um, now, so I will put the percent again with percent. You, you can only go between negative 100 and positive 100. Anything higher or lower than that just doesn't even make sense. Even going into negatives doesn't necessarily make sense, but sometimes it's it's an easier choice. Uh, it's a more intuitive choice. I use this for, for some animation tricks. But say I put in, we're going to put in 25 and hit go. And you'll see that the waves actually start, like up at the top of the screen, uh, the waves start at a they start at their 25% mark instead of starting at their zero mark. Uh, and then say I put in 50 and we'll pick green and hit go. And now you'll see that the waves start at like exactly inverted from where, what they are when they're at zero. You can definitely do some cool stuff with this. Um, if you're doing multiple fills or again, if you're doing animation, um, but I don't expect many people to be doing animation. Um, I mean, there's only five people who stipple wild. So I, I know you're not doing animation. I know all you guys. Um, all right. So next let's talk about mod mod is maybe the cool, one of the coolest new tricks or coolest tricks you can do with the waves. So first off, let's go and, and do a basic wave and then let's put a mod in of one. And we're going to switch to a different color, but keep that other wave up, hit go. And you'll see, well, actually let's delete and do it again. Uh, you'll see that now we've got this, this kind of, this like extra wave that's controlling how high and low the, uh, the first wave can get. I think the easiest might be to understand this with 0.5. Uh, instead of one and you'll see that the waves let's put the amplitude at 50 let's put the, the pix gap at something like 75 we just need more space on the screen uh, you'll see that the waves start out flat up at the top but then expand out here so not only are they going back and forth they're also being controlled by the overall uh, by this additional wave inside of it so let's put the amplitude at 200, pix gap at 150. So now you'll see these like football shaped waves. Um, but now if we were to take this and let's say put it at two and hit go, we get some really crazy stuff going on. Uh, 10 and then we'll put in 200 waves or two 
and we'll get some look at this it doesn't even look like waves anymore but there's definitely a pattern in there right now here's another trick that you can do which is uh so say you say a one pix gap just isn't cutting it anymore you actually need less space than a pixel between your uh dots and this ends up happening because the wave is pushing around the dots so hard that they no longer seem to stay on track is if you go back to rows and then you put in rows at a higher value than rows you have on your screen at all so i know that this uh, little tablet i have is 720 by 1080 i believe so i'm going to put in like a 4000 because if you have it at one pix gap it's only going to put in uh 1080 dot 10, uh 1080 dots but if i go and switch this to 4000 it's going to cram 4000 dots onto the screen or 4000 dots vertically onto the screen so now watch this and now we can actually see some pattern like we actually see a new set of patterns wow that's pretty crazy uh showing up it looks like a, a broken nintendo cartridge or something um let's play with that let's go ahead and put glitter on yeah there we go you like that you like that bugsy um all right so i'm gonna just go back let's just clear this out to zero all right first of all i made this number pad myself um because the phone's number pad was just not cutting it for me so i made this number pad it's not done yet it's functional but let's talk about it we got one two three four we know that we got a negative button um put you can put a negative in between stuff it shouldn't do that it's not going to let you put in weird values like watch this if i try to go and enter this it's not even going to let me do it like it'll say invalid value up at the top and it just won't let me do it so now if i clear the if i hit x it'll it'll shut the thing down if i hit b that's for backspace uh so if i put in 58 and then if i hit n that's for next and it's going to go to my next uh input value so you'll see that we can we can just go from input value to input value if we want uh but generally speaking i use e for enter so i'm going to put in zero and i'm going to put an e all right so that takes care of a lot now let's see what are we at 22 minutes jesus christ and we're not even close to being done um okay so basically you can put in waves for your y value as well um but sometimes you're going to look at this and you're not going to see that it's actually you're not going to you're not going to see that it's doing anything uh what's going on here uh 10 waves you're going to say wait a second I put in these waves well not in this case something really strange happened in this case but sometimes if you have uh there's certain settings where even if you put in a y wave nothing's going to happen but in this case that's not that's not what happens now y waves works basically exactly like the x waves it's just uh oscillating um up and down as opposed to left and right um so i'm not going to go through each one you can experiment and see what happens if you have questions ask me Keep in mind, Stipple's usually right. I mean, it's always right. It's not. It's it's math. It's not doing anything weird. It's, it might appear weird to you. It might appear in, in, unpredictable, but it, it's not. So now I'm going to go to this uh, wave math, and this describes the order of which uh, Stipple calculates the X and Y values for the waves. So in this case, um, you could probably, like, X, Y, or Y, X might, not do what you'd expect it to do now, xy is almost always doing something weird uh i guess not in this case let's go back to pix gap of one uh five pix gap hmm? well you see some crazy stuff happens um oh there we go that's pretty cool uh so yeah xy almost uh xy almost always gives you a pattern that looks like this which is kind of like this horizontal mesh um uh i'm gonna shut off oh i'm gonna shut off my y waves uh put this back at 50 and put this at one what do we got 
All right. So now uh, if we put in zig, z or zag y, we've got zag x and zag y. We'll get into what ga and pj is in a second. Uh, zag x, you'll see, does. No, we want zag. We want zag x. Yeah, all right. Because we turned off our y waves. So watch this. It does zigzag waves like uh, like uh, Charlie Brown's um, shirt. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Whoops. All right. So now we can start combining these effects. Um, I'll let you play with that. Uh, you can. I mean, this is like 20 different settings and you can combine all of them. Uh, so you can just go to town with this. Um, PJ is pre-jitter. What that means is uh, if you had a draw image and, whoa, come on. If you had a draw image, all right, and we put jitter on. So you can basically, I'm going to shut off all the waves because we're done with the waves. Uh, so generally, um, oops. All right. So now you see, uh, even though we don't have the random on, we're still using square. Now the dots are randomly placed. So basically jitter takes the place of random. You don't even need to use random. I don't know why I left it in there. I was just afraid that there was a case in which you could use it. But now if we shut off pre-jitter, now you'll notice, or PJ is pre-jitter, and if we shut it off, you'll notice that now we're not even really resembling the draw image anymore. That's because it's putting the dot down, sampling, and then and then moving the dot, like jittering the dot. But if we have pre-jitter, uh, basically it, move, it, it jitters the dot, and then it samples. So it ends up still resembling the draw image. This, this works out well for some like natural looking stippling stuff. Um, if you check my Instagram page every once in a while, I just, I'll do something that looks like an actual stipple drawing instead of something that looks like a psychedelic skull. Um, well, they're usually, there's, a, there's some overlap in there too. Uh, all right. So now what's GA. Uh, if you put GA on, let's see, I'm going to ditch this. Let's put hex on because I think this is a pretty cool trick. All right. So let's put the pix gap for both of them. Let's say 10. We'll do 10 for both. Um, now, if you were to try to draw on the screen, you're going to say canvas is locked. And that's because we screen locked before. But we're going to shut screen lock off. Now we have GA on down here. Now watch this. When I draw... It, it adheres to the grid. What's GA stand for? Grid adherence. Because it's adhering to the grid. Uh, this is pretty cool. Because now you have a halftone brush. And for anybody in the graphic design industry, uh, a halftone brush is a bit of a wet dream. Uh, excuse the expression. Um, but I'm 20 minutes or 30 minutes deep, so I'm not killing... I'm not starting over because I made a gross joke. Um, so now you can let's let's put this at square, and let's put some waves on here. And now watch, my dots are adhering to the grid, but the grid is in a wave. Uh, row, hold on. So now we're drawing with these weird psychedelic waves. Pretty cool. So now this is good. The grid in here, basically, it's a, if you ever need to touch up one of your fills, like you do a fill, but you're like, ah, I didn't hit this one spot, or I want to just touch this, I just want to fix this one spot. Um, uh, grid adherence is great. I mean, grid adherence is really cool. Honestly, grid adherence is something that I never even thought like it fulfills something in stipple that I've always wanted stipple to do, which is more, uh, uh, intelligent dot placement. And I really never, 
I never thought I'd figure it out. But then when I did figure it out, like now, shit, man, like my, uh, it's like stipple is surpassing any other stippling software out there. Uh, not only in the way that you can place the dots, but like now you can control the, the grid and the, in the, in the waviness of the grid. And we can go anywhere from being psychedelic, like having psychedelic effects like this to using less waves and just having more of a, like a traditional style, uh, like hedge cut as as it's called let's go with white we'll take glitter off uh like oh man look how cool that is so one thing to know is the old phil actually did respect uh the old phil actually respected the um auto levels new phil does not however if you use grid adherence it does so you can still get that cool, um, like the sensitivity of autofill or the sensitivity of auto threshold and respect the grid by using grid adherence. I think 31 minutes, I think that's the longest video we that I've ever done. So yeah, well, if you made it this far, I doubt you made it this far, but if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, have fun. Before I kill this, I'm going to try to think if there's anything else I should talk about. Uh, no. I think we've covered everything. Yeah. I think we've covered everything. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for stippling.